This video tutorial will solve AP Chemistry free response question number three from the 2013 exam. Uh, let's read through the question. A student is assigned the task of determining enthalpy change for a reaction between solid magnesium oxide and aqueous hydrochloric acid, represented by the equation shown. Uh, he uses a coffee cup calorimeter and does four trials. The data are in the data table. First question, subpart A, what is the limiting reactant in all four, all four trials? Is it hydrochloric acid or is it magnesium oxide? And then you must justify your answer. Well, there's two ways to do this. Uh, the first is sort of the old school uh, calculation method where we're just going to simply calculate the number of moles of hydrochloric acid. And in all four trials, that number is the same, 100 mils of, of 1.0 molar hydrochloric acid. So that calculation is shown here. Uh, M times V, molarity times volume, is number of moles. In all four trials, it's 0.1 mole. For magnesium oxide, I chose trial number two or trial number four, which are the same, uh, because it has the highest amount, highest mass of magnesium oxide. So that would, come, that would tell me what's limiting a little better than something that has a lower mass. So uh, this is just mass divided by the molar mass, and I get uh, 0.01, roughly, um, moles of magnesium oxide. So which one's limiting? Well, notice the stoichiometry of the reaction tells me I've got to have twice as much um, hydrogen ion as magnesium oxide. And look at my mole ratio here. I've got more, much more than twice as much hydrogen ion than I do magnesium oxide. So HCl is in excess, and magnesium oxide then is limiting. Now, there is another way to do this sort of intuitively. If you look at the, uh, the four trials, in all four trials, um, hydrogen HCl was held constant. And yet, there's a variation in temperature. In particular, look at uh, trials three and four, when the, uh, the amount or mass of magnesium oxide is doubled. The delta T, which is shown in this part of the data table, the delta T roughly doubles as well. So it seems to me that temperature change does not depend on the amount of HCl. It depends on the amount of magnesium oxide. Therefore, magnesium oxide, as it's consumed, is generating heat. If the hydrogen chloride, HCl, were limiting, um, the same amount of heat would be generated in each trial, and that's not true, as it were totally consumed. If it's limiting reactant, it gets totally consumed and would generate the same amount of heat. And we can see that's not the case. So this part uh, of the question could be answered by simply saying the amount of heat generated depends on magnesium oxide. And remember, heat is a product of the reaction. Uh, so the, the mass of product, not mass, but the amount of product, the amount of heat generated depends on magnesium oxide, the limiting reactant, and not the HCl. Question subpart B that says, the data in one of the trials is inconsistent with the data in the other three. Which trial is inconsistent? Draw a line through it and explain how you identified uh, that as the inconsistent data. Well, it, if you look at the, the trials, um, trial number three is a repetition of trial one. Trial number four is a repetition of child two, trial two. And in trials three and four, shown here, we have uh, when we double the amount of limiting reactant, we double the amount of heat generated. The temperature increases by a, by, by a factor of two. Uh, and uh, in the repetition of trial four, which is, sorry, repetition of trial two, which is trial four. In trial two, we had the same result. We did get uh, four degrees C temperature change in a re repeated trial. However, in the repeated trial one and three, uh, we did not. Trial one seems to be different from everything else in the data table. It doesn't reflect the trend we're seeing where we double the amount of limiting reactant we double the temperature change. So it seems to me that trial one is uh, the one that is inconsistent with the other ones. We cross that one out. And the justification is based on the, the identification of magnesium oxide as the limiting reactant. If we double it, we should double the heat change, and we don't in trial one. Question C, calculate the magnitude of the heat uh, generated when magnesium oxide was added to the 1.0 molar HCl. Include units with your answer. 
Um, this is using any of the three trials, and there are some assumptions. First of all, the calorimeter uh, does not absorb any heat from the reaction, and the specific heat of the contents is 4.18, that's specific heat of water, um, and also the uh, density of the HCl is one gram per mil. So that's going to make our life a little bit easier. There is a trick, though. To calculate Q, of course, it's M times C times delta T, the mass of the solution times the specific heat of the solution, which is given, times the delta T, uh, which is uh, given in the experimental data set. So we can substitute some things in, but there is something to be careful of, and that's the mass. The mass, we had 100 mils of the HCl at 1 gram per mil, so we know it's 100 grams. But we added 0 0.5, let's use trial 2, 0 0.5 grams of the magnesium oxide. So we have to include that as total mass uh, times C, which is 4.18. Uh, joules per gram degree C. This is, of course, all in grams, by the way up here, uh, times the delta T, and the delta T for that one was 4.1 degrees C. So the uh, value is 1,700 uh, joules or 1 1.7 uh, kilojoules. Subpart D of the question says, determine the student's experimental value of delta H for the reaction uh, in units of kilojoules per mole. For the reaction. So subpart D, remember that um, Q of the reaction is equal to the negative Q in the calorimeter. We measure the, the temperature of the water, of the solution in the calorimeter, not of the materials or the chemicals themselves that are undergoing the change. So we reverse the sign. If we measure an increase in temperature, that means the materials, the chemicals in the calorimeter have lost energy. So that, that sign is negative. So Q of the reaction we just figured out. Q of the reaction is 1.7 kilojoules or 1,700 joules. So how many moles is the question? So we're essentially substituting this, Q of the reaction over number of moles, and let's use number of moles of magnesium oxide. Okay? So we have negative 1,700 joules per some number of moles. How many moles? We had 0 0.5 grams divided by... 40.3 grams per mole. And calculating that, you get negative 140 kilojoules per mole of magnesium oxide. The last sub-question, F, states the accepted value and the experimental value don't agree. We calculated the experimental value in step D of this problem, which we our, our result was 140 kilojoules per mole. In step E, the, uh, the accepted value uh, based on delta H's of formation was 100, negative 150, roughly, kilojoules per mole. So why the differential? The question asks, if the calorimeter leaked energy to the environment, um, would it help account for this discrepancy? And the answer is yes. Uh, and the, particularly, you always remember to explain, well, why? We measured a delta T of 4.1 degrees C in the solution. Some heat was lost to the calorimeter and eventually to the atmosphere. So if it had not been, this value of delta T would be higher, let's say 5 degrees C. Uh, and if it were, we would have calculated a higher value for uh, the Q of the reaction, the heat of the reaction, uh, say 1900 kilojoules, sorry, 1900 joules or 1.9 kilojoules. And therefore, this value, which is substituted in here, we would have ended up with a larger value of the experimental uh, uh, heat. So the uh, loss of heat to the calorimeter would definitely explain the discrepancy between the experimental and the accepted values for delta, for delta H. So in other words, the, um, experimental, the experiment looks less exothermic than it actually is because we couldn't measure some of the heat that was generated. It was lost to the calorimeter, lost to the atmosphere. And that concludes this uh, video tutorial on free response question number three.